And welcome back to Spell's Classroom. Today in class, what we're going to be talking about is kind of the basics of meteorology and what affects that. So we'll be talking a little bit, kind of just a general overview of some things and Hope that you enjoy this lesson. So when we think about meteorology, we'll be talking about today are air masses. So so air masses. If we've got you know the entire Earth, we're going to have different air masses that have different temperatures, different pressures, which is going to affect, you know, the weather and how their wind is moving them and how they're, you know, interacting with other air masses. Um, and then we've also got synaptic me meteorology. And what that is is just kind of a focal point and you're kind of looking at the pressure and wind and things like that. So when you have that, you're also looking at pressure and wind. Which you can kind of group those together. So those two kind of go together. And when you're thinking about that, you're also going to want to think about, you know, the origin of the wind and where that's starting, where it's coming from, and also thinking about the rotation of the Earth and how that's going to affect, you know, the air masses, you know, kind of the pressure points and where things are moving. So, um, a big part of weather is clouds, so we're going to kind of talk about that, and then we're going to talk a little bit about fronts. Um, and so it's going to be kind of a shorter lesson today, but I hope that you enjoy. So, when we think about clouds, think about how do clouds form. So, in order to understand this process, you really have to understand, you know, cold slash warm air and their relationship with density. So when you think about this, you know, warm air rises, okay, it's less dense. So I'm just going to write that down, warm air rises. So that air, it's going to rise, but eventually it's going to cool. Um, the air will begin condensing. So when the temperature and dew point become closer together, they're going to form water droplets, and those are going to bond. And then eventually they're going to kind of collide and form a cloud. Okay. So we've got warm air is rising, it's less dense. Okay. So we know that warm air rises, which is less dense air. And so the next thing that we're going to talk about are different types of clouds. And so there's three kind of categories of clouds. And within that, we've got different types of clouds. So the first type that we're going to talk about are low clouds, and low clouds consist of kind of flat clouds or puffy clouds. Um, 
I'm lying on or just above the surface, so approximately 10,000 feet. Okay, so some examples of little clouds are cumulus, so those are the puffy ones. You can see that, these nice puffy clouds, and they are lower, closer to the ground. So we've got cumulus. And then another type of low cloud are stratus clouds. So you can see here they're kind of more flat clouds. And there. So for our low clouds, oops, we have ooh, sing under that. We have the stratus and cumulus clouds. And those are approximately 10,000, so up to 10,000 feet. So these ones lie pretty close to the ground. So for the middle clouds, these consist of kind of mean a middle cloud types of clouds. So these will go from ten thousand to twenty thousand feet above the surface. So some examples of middle clouds are alto. Cumulus, so they're kind of puffy there, but these are between 10,000 and 20,000 feet. So, as you can see, they're higher up, alto cumulus, and they're kind of got that puffy look like the cumulus clouds. And then the other kind is the alto stratus, so these are up higher up, but they're more of the flat kind of clouds, but they're going to be higher up. So we've got our middle clouds, and then after we have our low clouds, we also have high clouds, which I'm going to talk about next. clouds and high clouds consist of mainly ice crystals suspended above 20,000 feet so high clouds are above 20,000 feet and they're typically ice so these clouds are kind of wispy crisp feather like in appearance and do not produce precipitation so, some examples of high clouds are um, cirrus clouds. So, you can see they're kind of wispy feather like these are not going to produce any type of precipitation. And we also have um, cirro cumulus. You can see the kind of the feathery look, um, kind of wispy, but they're up high too. And it's kind of the icy. And then the um, zero stratus, so it's more of kind of the flat look that you see, but it's also with ice and it's very high up. Okay. 
her. So we're going to review that. Um, just now that we kind of introduced it, I just want to go over it one more time with you. Go ahead and release this. Okay, so we have low clouds. feet. These are the ones that can produce storms. So up to 10,000 feet they can produce storms. And the two types of low clouds are cumulus, which is, and the other one is stratus. These are the ones that are going to be lower, they're going to kind of affect the weather more. And then we have the medium, which are from 10,000 10, to 20,000 feet. And the types of medium clouds, so the types of medium clouds are the alto. Cumulus and the Alto Stratus. And then lastly, we have high clouds, and high clouds are anything above 20,000 feet. And the types of high clouds we've got are. are more of the icy, wispy, crisp, so kind of wispy clouds, more crisp, and they're made of ice. Okay, so those are the three types of clouds. And then within those, we've got more types, three categories of clouds, I should say. rain form, so we're going to think a little bit about the clouds. So through the collision process, um, water droplets continue to grow, forming clouds. So when we think about, you know, the water cycle, which was discussed in a previous lesson, um, water droplets are being formed through the evaporation and being condensed, and if enough, you know, lift is present in the atmosphere, which is produced by fronts, um, updrafts are created, the water droplets continue to grow inside the clouds until they become too heavy, and then once they're too heavy, it's going to be suspended by the updraft, and it's that these droplets fall down to earth as rain. So, I spoke a little bit about fronts. So, fronts, now that we kind of understand a little bit more about, you know, clouds, formation, um, you know, a little bit about the density, um, we're going to talk a little bit about fronts, so, and how they affect weather. So we've got, you know, types of fronts, we've got cold fronts and warm fronts. So cold fronts are a transition zone where cold and dry and stable air is replacing warm, moist, unstable air. 
so it is me through I don't have that color marker but when you're thinking about you know a map and you want to show a cold front you're going to kind of look something like this you've got these kind of triangles and these this will be blue if you're looking at it on a map and I don't have a marker so this is supposed to represent a cold front so with this, you've got colder temperatures. And this should be blue. Okay. So, as that's coming in, it's replacing with more stable air. So you're going to have less storms, and it's not going to be, you know, it's getting rid of kind of that warm, moist air. So. If this was the warmer temperatures, so we've got warmer temps, a cold front is kind of just coming in and replacing that, and it, it makes sense. Okay, so if we were to think about this kind of on land and what that might look like, so let's see that this is the land, okay, and then this here, just kind of kind of I'm going to do my best with this. So, I've got this. Just do this here. Extend that land. So, here, we've got a little. This is going to be the kind of the cold front, okay? So, it's got some, we've got some advancing cold air here, okay? And it's coming through. And then, as that's coming, the warm air. When you have warm air, it's going to be rising, okay? So I should say rising. So we've got rising warm air. The cold air is coming through and replacing that, okay? So if this is the land here, we've got some grass, but the cloud, this is going to be rising, and the cold air is going to be replacing that, okay? Which is going to be more stable temperatures and things like that, okay? So, the opposite of cold front is a warm front, so warm fronts are going to just be replacing the more stable air with more warm and moist air, so it's the opposite. So when you see a warmer front, you're going to think up like this. So it's, this is red. I don't have a red, so I'm going to write this should be in red. And we've got kind of like these little half circles here. And kind of actually look a little like umbrellas, but they're not. Oops, sorry. Okay. So we got that, and then with that, you're going to have warmer. Coming in, okay, and it's going to be replacing the colder temperatures. Okay, so if we were to look at that, kind of comparing it to land, this is what it would look like. So with that, we've got some land here. Just go back. So this is some land. And then with that, we've got kind of this. I'm just going to draw it out here. That way we can kind of see this a little bit better. Okay, so this is supposed to represent kind of the warm front coming in, which is going to, you know, cause more unstable weather. We're going to have more clouds, more humidity, more moisture, and the cold air will be kind of escaping that, okay? So the cold air is going to come the 
this way, warm air is going to push through. Okay, so we've got cold fronts, warm fronts, and then the last thing we have is a stationary front, which means that the weather just stays the same and it's not going to change much. So a stationary front, what that might look like on, you know, map B, you're going to have, this is going to be red ones, and then you're going to have blue, red, blue, and red, green, red, blue, blue. So what that looks like is you just get cold air here. So nothing's really changing, stationary means the weather's staying the same. So that is all that I have about fronts and clouds and kind of weather terms. So I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you soon.